Hi, good morning, Jim Wren. I'm here with David Lassen, associate editor. I'm the editor of Trains Magazine. We're glad you're here for our, our weekly Newswire recap. It's Friday, July the 22nd. Welcome, David. Hey, good, good to be here, Jim. Steve Sweeney is on vacation, we think, or we hope. We hope he's speeding back safely. He was down in uh, West Virginia and enjoyed a little bit of time at Cass Scenic Railroad. Like that's a trip I'd like to do. Sometime. Yeah, it's a, a nice time of the year to be there. Good and good and uh, humid and sweaty. But uh, anyway, we're glad you guys are here. We hope you're staying cool. Uh, busy week this week in uh, steam locomotive news, which uh, as everybody knows, I love. And um, and uh, David, you you probably noticed the uh, UP ran the 844 down to Denver. It's on the uh, Cheyenne Frontier Days train this week. Uh, Glad to see that. That's a great tradition. Um, it, I, I had seen it a few times when I lived in that area, but usually had the E units on the point. Yeah, so. yeah. So nice to see that back. And um, then elsewhere, uh, some news taking place this morning that we're covering live. Uh, Great Smoky Mountains Railroad's uh, restored uh, consolidation 1702 is on the way down to uh, make its debut run, but it's having some uh, bearing issues, so may be delayed. Looks like they may have to run this morning's trip without the steam, but it looks like they'll get it back uh, in, into town at least so people can see it, and I'm sure the bearing fix won't be long, but uh, kind of a little bit of a disappointment there. It's amazing how much steam activity we're having these days. There is a lot going on. And then one other thing that excited me was the uh, uh, museum, the Lake Superior Railroad Museum in Duluth uh, uh, did a hydrostatic test on their uh, 280, uh, number 28. So that's getting really close. So a lot of, lot of steam news this week. And uh, Virginia Museum of Transportation's uh, 611 documentary just came out this week too. I'm, I'm excited about 844 being back. That's a gorgeous locomotive and it's good to see that the other thing that will excite people about that is that now that's done, they move on to the next big project, and yeah, we all know which what is that the big boy, <laughs> yes. yeah, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, that reminds me, Ed Dickens, who's manager of the Steam program, is speaking at the NRHS convention in Denver tonight, so we'll get a report about that. Uh, that'll probably go up on Saturday. I'll probably slip in here and post that tomorrow. So, so what what caught your eye on the newswire this week? Well, the strange story to me that's going on is all this stuff about Pokemon Go. Now, I have to admit, I know virtually nothing about this game. I'm learning more than I really want You're to. You're not just playing. In, no, I'm not. I okay. am not playing. I'm, I'm not, not in their target audience. But um, we had two stories this week, basically, about railroads and organizations having to warn people to kind of pay attention and not get run over by trains and things like that, or not to trespass onto railroad property while playing this game. Um, I guess there are a lot of uh, unintended consequences oh, of dear. this virtual reality game. We had a, I saw a story, a not rail related story, but certainly salient to this, um, where the uh, Holocaust Museum in Washington oh, DC no. had asked people to quit playing Pokemon in the, within the museum. Um, uh, Makes sense. Th there's, there's a lot of strange uh, people. There's, there, there was a, a guy I read about whose house is being used for this, and he had to tell the neighbors that um, he had nothing to do with it, and that no, the fact that people are coming at all hours does not mean he's a drug dealer. They're playing Pokemon. So, so folks, if you're, if you're into the Pokemon thing, first of all, I don't need any explanations about it. I don't really want to know any more about it. But say, if you are, remember, if you're around the tracks, if you're around anything that's moving, please be careful. I will also note that there are a couple, couple organizations that are um, sort of embracing this thing. Uh, Drangle and Silverton has, uh, oh, wow. has some, um, some things for people to participate and, and uh, note that they're doing it on social media using the, the so, DNS ha hashtag. Gorgeous Colorado scenery is not enough anymore. No, and then uh, <laughs> LA Metro is doing some things with its light rail and its rail system, um, helping people uh, find Pokemon wow. along the route. So, so there's good and bad like most things, but it's just, to me, not being a player, there's a lot of strange stuff going that on. That's pretty this. amazing. Wow. So the other thing that was kind of worth noting this week, I thought, was um, the, there was a, a Service Transportation Board ruling on Texas Central, the uh, proposed high-speed rail between uh, Dallas and Houston, where the STB said it has no jurisdiction over this because it's an intrastate hmm. uh, operation that will not connect to the existing rail network. Uh, this is generally being seen as good news for the opponents of it because now they can wage the fight at the state level, state level where they sure. will probably have a lot more leverage. So could be a big setback for that, um, that plan. We, we'll see, have to fall and see what happens, but initial uh, take is that it's probably not good news. Wow. 
pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. We've got a trivia contest winner from last week. That was uh, Thomas Kinney. He uh, estimated the uh, speed of Steve Sweeney's uh, Shea Powered trip at CAST to be 14 miles an hour. So we picked that out for you. We'll be sending you a uh, copy of our brand new 20th Century Limited DVD, which is on sale now. Great documentary from Rich Luckin and uh, the folks here at Trains Magazine. And uh, Brian Schmidt is really generous. He was, he was in your spot yet last week, and he also threw in the West Virginia issue from uh -huh. a couple of years ago. So Thomas, drop us an email uh, to uh, newswire at trainsmag.com, and we will uh, send you your gifts along the way. And if you are out and about and you see news happening or you have a news tip for us, you can also use that email address to send us uh, news, uh, info, video, uh, email, uh, photos, whatever you got on there, just drop it to us on an email. So we'd, we'd love to have that. Do we have a trivia question for this week? We do. We do have a trivia question for this week. Um, the, <clears throat> the answer of which is found uh, a few days ago in the Newswire. How many locomotives does Union Pacific currently have in storage? Not a real happy stat, but a significant one. Go, go take a look back through Newswire this week. The answer is, um, is somewhere in the, um, in the stories from this week. Uh, be sure and check out uh, Newswire this afternoon. We'll have an update about Great Smoky Mountains Railroad's 1702 debut. And we've got a, an, an exclusive coming up at noon uh, Eastern Time. Uh, USA Today did a poll of readers' favorite uh, tourist railroads, train rides, and also transportation museums. We, we had a lot of uh, requests from um, transportation museums to kind of post on our site, you know, that we're doing this. I kind of figured we couldn't favor anybody, so right. we, we left them on their own with right. that. So, uh, so anyway, uh, be sure and check Newswire uh, later on today for the results on that, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Otherwise, have a great, uh, have a great weekend and um, enjoy yours. Thanks, you too. Take care, everybody. The red carpet, you know, there's so many things about the 20th Century Limited that really set it aside from all other trains. Hello, I'm Michael Gross, and this is New York's Grand Central Terminal. The synergy between Grand Central Terminal and the 20th Century Limited was magical. Uh, J3 Hutch could pull probably 16 to 18 cars. The 1948 century would still put most other trains to shame. The 20th Century Limited, just the most famous train in the world.